Here is a rough sketch of the circuit that we'll be using to test the oscillator mixer idea. In the middle we're going to use a heptode. Uh, this is the one with five grids in it because we talked about it already and it seemed like a good idea to use one here. Um, once again a quick recap on what we're doing. This is a heptode. The lower grid, this is grid number one, and grid number two combined with grid number four. This is the oscillator section. The oscillator section with the oscillator tuning capacitor and these are the two coils in the oscillator coil itself. Then the HT supply which is around 100 volts, 95 in the case of our um, radar room chassis. Uh, 95, 100, doesn't matter. That is our HT supply. The HT supply comes to the anode of the valve also through an intermediate frequency transformer. Now we happen to have one here which will be using this IFT uh, 465 kilohertz. That is our intermediate frequency. This is the difference uh, signal frequency which we'll be using to drive the IF amplifiers. So the input signal will come eventually on this grid here, grid 3, which is as a 10 meg resistor taking it down to ground. There's nothing on here at all at the moment. We're putting nothing on there. So that is where the signal from the radio signal will be going. They are then combined with the oscillator here and the signals will reach the anode and the difference goes out on the IF transformer. This is our simple circuit which we knocked up on the radar room universal chassis. We're just using one section from this multi-gang tuning capacitor. We'll be just using a 280 picofarad section for the oscillator. Here is our heptode valve which in fact is a DK96, could be a DK92, DK91. Here is our oscillator coil. There are in fact 15 turns and 3 turns. That gives us roughly somewhere in the middle of the shortwave bands which we'll be using. Also note that down further down there is in fact a battery holder. 1.4 volt uh, supply for the heater in the valve. Uh, it seemed too much trouble really to sit down and make a regulated circuit just to produce 1.4 volts from the 6.3 volt supply already on this chassis. Underneath there's virtually nothing to see at all. Base of the B7G valve holder, only held on by one screw, there's only a little temporary lash up. Resistor, there's a capacitor, a couple more resistors, and that's all there is to it. We're, as I say, we're using the HT from the radar room, uh, power supply that's already on there, and the battery for the, the filament supply on that. What we need to put in here now will be to put in the IFT in the anode circuit, which will be going to this wire here and then from there to the HT supply. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is check out the oscillator in this portion of the circuit. We won't be feeding anything into the control grid at all. In other words, there's no signal there at all. That's simply taken via that resistor to the ground. Here is a scope probe. What we're going to do is we're going to connect it to point A here. It's an insulated wire going from the top of the oscillator tuning capacitor and the 100 picofarad we can see there. We'll clip it on there. We will actually clip it over it. We're not, connect we're not connecting it physically so it's a very low level capacity going through the insulation of the wire. <clears throat> we put a battery in the holder. Now all we have to do is power up the HT which is on here. We have about 2 milliamps on the meter. And, hey presto, we have a waveform. This is showing that our oscillator is actually oscillating. So this will be the oscillator part of the ganged tuning capacitor. So by adjusting this, should adjust the frequency of the oscillation. There we go. So that proves that part of the circuit. Here is the next setup we need in order to do our next tests. Um, we go through it slowly. We have an RF signal generator and obviously we have the scope. Now what we've done is we've connected the output of the RF signal generator to the input of the heptode and that is on this pin here which is the third grid. Now we've put it through a small value capacitor here. 
What we've done is we're monitoring the other end of the valve at the oscillator, which is here. And this is where we've connected another, well, actually not a small capacitor. We put a small piece of wire on and we're using the capacity between the scope probe tip and through the insulation to the wire to look at the frequency which the heptode is oscillating at. So if we make a start, let's look at what is on the screen at the moment. Now we have the oscillator set at 6 megahertz. The power is on, it's still taking 2 milliamps. The scope is showing nothing. The reason why the scope is showing nothing is because this transformer here, where we're monitoring the output with this scope probe here, will only see something when it hits 465 kilohertz. Now, by feeding 6 megahertz into here, there's nothing anywhere near 465 kilohertz there. So the only way we can create a signal to look at on our IF stage from our 6 megahertz signal is to beat it with the oscillator here. And that's what we're going to do. So the only, what we need to do is now change the frequency of the oscillator using the control to, to give us a difference between the 6 meg going in and 465 coming out. Therefore, we either need 6 meg plus whatever to give us 465 or 6 meg minus whatever to give us this figure here. So, if we turn up the turn up we turn up the frequency here. Let's watch on the scope and see what happens if we do it slowly. If we go up slowly we suddenly have a frequency and that is 465 kilohertz because that is the signal going through the IFT. There's no, no amp fire or anything on the other side, it's just simply we're looking at the other end of those windings. So if we go a bit further there is a second one and that is our second signal. And the next part of the experiment, what we're doing is we've connected up a second scope trace here to the output of the oscillator via a very, very small value capacitor, which in fact takes the form of the insulation of this piece of wire. So, once again, the top one, we're looking at the output of the IFT, and this one will be looking at the oscillator frequency. So, we're still set on 6 meg coming through from the signal generator. If we turn up the speeding up the oscillator, there we are, that's the first one. So that is the first 465k coming from this signal, 60 meg, minus whatever the oscillator is reading. So if we now go a little bit further, increase the frequency of the oscillator, there we go. That is the second frequency at which we see 465k. Now, it doesn't tell us a great deal about what that is, so if we go back to the first one, so we reduce the frequency again. That was the first one, which we had the reading. Let's see if we can do this. Multiply by 10, trigger on the next one, and that is the frequency of the oscillator. So if we try and bring him into position here, one, two, three, four, five and a half. So that's roughly five and a half megahertz, which shows us that it is the six meg minus the uh, value of the IF. Now if we go up to the next one, we'll watch and see if that is trigger on the top one again. We increase the frequency. There we go. That is the second time it oscillates. You need to see perhaps there. We now measure the frequency 
battery will run in a second one, of course. Let's measure that and find out what that one is. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half meg. Which means that this one is the one that we would be actually using um, because that is now making the oscillator frequency above that of the source frequency. Just to finish off this uh, part of the project, um, what we've done is we've removed the second trace. We've gone back to just looking at the output of the intermediate frequency transformer for the 465. But what we've done is we've added to modulation, like a, a signal you'd find on, on the radio. So it's just one kilohertz as we turn up through the frequency again. Note there's obviously nothing on it yet because we're way off the frequency. Let's look for the first time, which is the image signal, which is the fundamental company or says so the source minus the oscillator frequency and that's it there we go so that's the first one that's the one as a rule we don't use we use the upper one so if we keep going there we go and that is the second one This is the simple yet a little untidy setup we'll be using for the last part of this uh, talk on the superhet. Now in the middle, which is a bit difficult to see, is a bit of a mess, but this actually is the insides of a very old 1950s battery valve set by Vidor. Um, it was in a real state, so there was no suggestion of restoring it as half it was missing. Anyway, we've made the IF the detector and the audio part of it working again. Uh, even the output transformer had been removed. So we've put one behind it just so we can listen to what the output of the set is. Now, the tuning capacity you see in the front, that is actually the only one which we're using. The one on the uh, original battery valve set we're not using. So the one you can see in the foreground there is actually going to be our aerial uh, tuner. You can see the, the long, thin aerial coil going to the left and that we're using just quickly, roughly connected up to our new oscillator mixer so we can have a front end to tune the signals. Uh, to the right we have an oscilloscope and that at the moment is displaying a waveform uh, which is coming from the output of the oscillator and the oscillator mixer stage. What we've done here is we've now turned up the volume from the AF stage so we can hear the 1 kilohertz tone coming from the signal generator. That's the modulation frequency coming which is being overlaid over the top of the 6 megahertz. That is then being fed through here. It's actually not going through the wire. That's simply the crocodile clip simply holding the output of the signal generator there to keep it near this part of the circuit that's picking it up. It's no arrow but it's picking it up. It's then going into the oscillator mixer valve. The signal is being mixed with the 5.5 MHz here which gives us a different signal. It's about 5.5, it's not quite 5.5 of course, it's 465 kHz. Um, it's then being fed in, out here into the IF two IF stages, oh sorry, one, one, there are two IF transformers but the second one then goes to the detector and through the audio and it's coming out on the speaker. Now if we tune that in, that is the aerial coil which this very long thin one's the aerial coil. Okay so we know now that that is the image signal which is the um, the fundamental frequency coming from the signal generator which we which is 6 megahertz minus the oscillator now normally it's the other way around so there will be another signal which will be higher up which will be exactly what we want to hear now we'll see two things happen here number one you'll notice that the scope um, trace will change that's when we vary the frequency of the oscillator we don't touch the signal generator we're just going to change the oscillator on its own so when we up that the tone will disappear because no longer will it be able to be passed through the IF stages on the radio here. So what I'll do now is I'll turn the frequency up 
tone will go off. You'll see the scope trace moving. Then we'll hear the tone come back as we hit the actual signal, which is the fundamental plus the frequency coming from the oscillator here. So let's do that now. We're turning it up. And there we go. And that is the second one. So we peak that with now with the aerial tuning. We adjust that up correctly. We can now see one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. So that is the fundamental, the original frequency plus the oscillator frequency. So that is what we would be using not ordinarily in a superhead. That's just about proved. I think that everything is working correctly. So what we need to do next is introduce a radio signal at a frequency where we know there should be something going in, in one of the short waves. Now what I'm probably going to do here, I think, is we use 6 megahertz, which is round about somewhere within the 49 megahertz broadcast band. So I'll do a quick swap of bits and pieces and let's see if we can pick up any signals. Turn the volume right up. Let's see what happens. Oops. Something there. Seems to be working, doesn't it? So there we go, that is uh, our new oscillator mixer feeding the existing IFs detector and audio from the, from the original radio. So that's about as far as we can go with this until one such time as one were to build that into there and hopefully we'll be able to do that soon. But there you go, that's our, our summary really of how a superhead works. You can see how we started with the oscillator mixer section and how we tested it just to check that everything worked. Obviously if you were doing this properly and you had everything nicely laid out then things might work a bit better. But once again it just shows what you can do if you do a rough and ready setup. Okay, thanks for watching anyway.